this talk will be about augmented reality with Thomas. And at the end of the session, before you go to lunch, please pass by me in that corner and you will get new Google Cardboard. All right, so this will mean you will love this session already before I deliver it, okay? <laughs> All right, okay, so welcome. My name is Thomas Ficker, and actually, I'm happy to be here because it required to clone myself simply because I've organized an event in Munich over the weekend, a conference and a hackathon around virtual reality and 360 degree video. So, but I was able to send over a second instance of myself, and so I'm happy to be here to oops, talk about uh, augmented and virtual reality technologies. Um, a little bit about myself, um, I studied computer science and entrepreneurship. I had a bunch of my own companies in the areas of IT, interactive media and online and since three years I have a new company called Experio and we are specializing in immersive solutions. This means we're looking into AR and VR technologies and trying to build next generation uh, experiences for entertainment, media, marketing or products and services. I'm also an Intel software innovator because we are um, looking deeply into technologies like RealSense because it's a very exciting technology to build next generation user interfaces. By the way, who has already heard about Intel RealSense? Okay, so then a lot of you will learn something new hopefully. Okay, so let's get started actually. Uh, and by the way, I have to apologize. My talk is not deeply technical, but I think it's, or hope it's, it's still uh, exciting for you. Um, Actually, we start a little bit uh, into the history and where we are today and maybe what's coming in the future regarding technologies for building immersive solutions. Then we look a bit more in detail uh, into the different devices and its capabilities and in the end we're looking uh, into, into real sense in, 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 uh, specifically. Um, let's start with this human-computer interaction because when we talk about immersion it's about involving more and more of your senses. So when you put on a virtual reality headset you hopefully forget the, the reality and getting beamed into a virtual world. You're getting the presence, you feel you are in a different location. So, and that's kind of uh, things enabled by a lot of technologies. But in the beginning of computing it was not that exciting what we had. We had all our keyboards and mice, you know. Um, and the computers over time uh, developed uh, into gaming and entertainment machines. We started to get uh, uh, joysticks and gaming controllers. Then we had the mobile revolution and people started to use touch, you know. Actually, uh, this summer I was at a friend of mine and his four-year-old son with ice cream in, on his hands touched the big screen and the television and said, oh, Daddy, I think the, the television is broken, it doesn't react to my touch, you know. So I think everybody is using touch now fully naturally. Um, and even other technologies uh, are becoming more and more a day-to-day -day use. So uh, in the beginning it was hard to talk to Siri or, or Cortana or say okay Google, but uh, more and more even the, the speech uh, interaction with computers is getting a normal thing, you know. But uh, the most exciting thing is that we are at a point in time where things get even more exciting because you know, uh, you've probably heard about Oculus Rift and other virtual reality uh, headsets. They will come to market next year and other exciting technologies. So we need to think about what's next in uh, interaction with computing devices. And I think there are basically two different main developments. So the first thing um, is something like the, the immersive computing path. So technologies which are uh, coming with a pretty exciting visual component. So you're getting more and more beamed into another world. And I think the Microsoft HoloLens is a, is a very exciting uh, example for such a product because it can build the whole spectrum from augmented to mixed up to virtual reality. And you probably have heard about HoloLens, so who has not heard about HoloLens yet? Okay, that's basically a new headset which uh, comes to market from, from Microsoft. It's a holographic computing device. So an independent device you put on your head. Uh, it has capabilities to sense the environment and put really a holographic computing in front of your vision. And that's pretty exciting. It will, uh, you can order a 
developer edition for three thousand dollar, I think, <laughs> when you have an address in, in North America or Canada, you know. But it will come to market probably in 2017 or something. But this will be very exciting. I know a bunch of people who had it already on their heads and they say, wow, that this could be something, you know. There will be some technical glitches, of course, but this is for sure very exciting technology. Again, it's more the visual part, you know. And I think that the second part, which is uh, very exciting, is that computing devices become more intelligent to uh, look at us, you know, it's about um, the, the natural user interface components, so gestures, uh, voice, etc. So Intel Resense, for instance, uh, is, is even capable of do uh, face recognition. So it can really look into 72 points in your face and can, of course, track the changes and can do even things like emotion recognition, so it can see that if you're smiling or something, you know. And so I think computing is not just getting more visual, but it's also getting more exciting in terms of the way we are interacting with them. Okay, so I, I put, by the way, Today Plus, because it's kind of available today, but it's not fully uh, a, a mass market stuff, you know, uh, but it will be for sure. Now I'm having actually uh, a real world example of a project we recently did and it shows basically the whole, what I call, digital experience spectrum. So when you build uh, solutions today, you can start in the real world, you know, and, and put some digital technologies into the, the game. But you can go more and more up to a full virtual world, you know. And this example is about a company who is doing office planning. So when you are, when you are planning a new office for, uh, let's say, a thousand people, you, you need to, to do a concept, like an architect. And so they're building these virtual worlds, you know, and we built some examples or uh, applications uh, along this uh, experience spectrum and the office planning services. Actually, we started with a mobile app, which is an extension when you go into a showroom. You know, you can interact with some beacons, can, can get some uh, uh, proximity-based or location-based uh, information to the, to the client. Um, the next step is to, to bring augmented reality into the game. And the technology is pretty old, but uh, for many people, it's still, still very exciting to see this little augmented reality application. So you just uh, need an app and a marker, so which the app can recognize, and then you can start to do these little interactive features. You know, you can put the full showroom into your pocket. You know, and we put some little interactions in that, so you can really swipe around and, and do some interactivity with with an augmented reality um, uh, application. So, uh, and uh, by the way, this this works, of course, also on augmented reality headsets. Uh, so actually I was Google Glass Explorer and we did a lot of uh, development also for Google Glass but unfortunately the device is not a mass market product yet but we will see a lot of AR products in the future. So the next uh, thing was that we developed uh, uh, an, a mobile application which works on the cardboards like Google ones and gives you the ability to walk through one of these offices which have been planned. So this is an, an application by the way, technically it's based on some HTML code, you know, uh, and we wrapped it basically and delivered it into, into an app, you know. And so it, it allows you to, to do some 360 degree explorations of different um, uh, areas of this planning object. And the cool thing is you can put it also in the VR mode, then you get the two uh, uh, displays and you can put it in a cardboard, and then you can walk around kind of by just moving your head, you know. Uh, and uh, so the next thing is we try to, to make it a very interactive experience. So we had a 3D model um, and we tried it to put on a mobile phone and realized, of course, it's not a full gaming machine. And so the re real time rendering of the, the objects was not great. So, um, and so then we exported a 360 degree video path, uh, published it to YouTube. And this is something you can uh, then watch also, uh, not just in a monoscopic view, but on your cardboard. So it gives you not the full interactivity, but you still have a high quality rendering, by the way, not on this video, <laughs> but it can go up to 4K. And so then you can really use a cardboard to give some, someone the uh, ability to explore a virtual uh, room, which is not there yet. And of course, the, the highest quality you can get is uh, on a full-blown virtual reality setup. So we. Uh, are developing stuff in, in Unreal, so there are different VR engines, Unreal, uh, Unity, but, but Unreal seems to have the better graphics engine at the moment, so when you want to get the highest um, uh, uh, graphics quality, you should go with 
unreal at the moment. So this is an example who shows uh, which shows basically what's what's possible already today. Um, and um, in the next section, I will drill down a bit into the different devices and capabilities. We have seen this this kind of uh, digital experience spectrum going from augmented mix up to to virtual reality. And uh, we have different devices in our hands to, to, to deliver these experiences. And we can start basically with our standard computing devices. The good thing is they're getting more and more intelligent and powerful. So everybody has probably a smartphone, a tablet, and a PC. Um, and these devices are getting more powerful, getting more intelligent. For instance, this is a, a Dell Venue a tablet, which has already the Intel ReSense camera built in. So you can start really to do exciting things. And all the other standard devices will evolve over time. We will get a bunch of new devices, of course. Um, again, sad that Google Glass didn't make it, but I'm uh, optimistic. So by the investments companies are doing, you know, um, Microsoft into um, HoloLens, or Apple got, uh, bought a Munich company, uh, Metaio in the AR space. Google invested a lot into Magic Leap, so you can expect to become augmented reality, a very exciting field. And I think it's even more uh, widely used than VR because you can use it the whole day. Uh, you, you do the VR stuff like going into a cinema. It's about some uh, gaming stuff, some entertainment stuff, but you don't do this the whole day. So this will be very exciting. Uh, this will be, of course, also very <coughs> exciting. I think when HoloLens comes to the market, it's probably in the first place more a productivity device in the enterprise and not a, a mass market thing, but over time, I think there's a great potential for HoloLens. But it's not just about holographic headsets, it's also about bringing immersive experiences into the real world in terms of holographic projectors, for instance. You know, there are more and more affordable holographic projectors out there. This is an example from a Kickstarter project, which is below $2,000 to get a, a, an, an immersive projection system. Actually, a partner company of us is building a kind of uh, cave-like environment, uh, uh, which, which not just has a, a kind of projection functionality, but also having an interaction functionality. And the cost is not that high, you know? And so people have a very exciting future, but especially, of course, with the upcoming virtual reality headsets. Who had already uh, played around with, uh, with, with uh, Oculus Rift or another headset? Okay, so some of you who had uh, the chance to play around with a cardboard-like experience. Okay, a few more, so but expect to, to have much more to come next year because a bunch of, uh, uh, actually yesterday I had a chance to, to, to play around with the HTC Vive, which is another uh, high-end headset which will come to market soon. So very exciting stuff, you know, we have a bunch of devices in the pipeline, not just the high-end headsets which have always these big cables for the, for, the, uh, for the computers, we have mobile headsets, especially Samsung has already released a bunch of, of headsets. And the cool thing is, there are also these cardboards. You just uh, use your phone and uh, some cardboard, and you have a kind of virtual reality viewer, you know? And it's quite exciting what you can get out of it. And as you've heard, you can uh, do, uh, try it out later for yourself. By the way, we developed our own cardboard because we believe the original design is not so sexy, and so we decided to, to improve a little bit. And uh, yeah, so that's the, the kind of device side. The question is now, uh, what kind of capabilities do these devices have to build immersive solutions? And uh, let's start with the context awareness. So uh, what kind of technologies do we have to get some context of the user? Um, and the exciting thing is even when you start with wearables, you know, the Apple Watch today can capture the, the heartbeat of a, of, a, of a user. And when you build an ex experience or application, you could even start using the heartbeat or the change of the heartbeat to, to do something in your applications. Uh, another thing, of course, of interest is where is that user? How, how can I interact with him? Uh, the whole uh, beacon technology is very exciting. So you have, get proximity, you can react on, on when a user is, is, is going by a different object or something. But we have also some classic uh, technologies like GPS in the outdoor space or Wi-Fi with Wi-Fi fingerprinting to get a location. Um, awareness within an office. So uh, we have a partner who has a solution which can, based on the wireless LAN infrastructure, locate the person up to one meter in a room, you know, and that's quite exciting. Some people forget about that when everybody is asking for beacons, you know, but you need to change the battery every five weeks <laughs> to, to get it work. 
Another thing for context is uh, also the upcoming wave of new cameras like the interior sets. You not just have the RGB value, but also some depth information of the room so you can really see what's in a room, you know, where a person is standing, what's in front, what's behind them. So that's about the, the whole way of sensing the context. The other thing is, of course, when you build uh, immersive solutions, what are your ways uh, to interact with the, uh, with the, the environment and the user? And, as already mentioned, touch has become a very exciting uh, technology for interaction. Voice uh, is becoming more and more popular. But there's another category coming up, which is about gesture recognition. Um, that's quite exciting. So actually, we're doing at the moment uh, uh, a prototype for a virtual boxing game. So we have a real boxer. I show you the uh, 3D model later, and we have lead motion as a as a controller on a VR headsets, and you are really boxing against a real boxer. Uh, by just your motion, you know, and uh, these technologies will become more and more popular, but they have also their challenges, you know, maybe you using an Apple device, uh, maybe even with this new 3D touch, so touch, we learned how to touch and swipe uh, uh, and, and, and pinch and zoom, etc., but now we're getting a third dimension, and now things are starting to get complicated, and so this is something which will also be the case with all the gesture stuff, because the, even when we are know what gestures are available as a programmer, the question is what does the user understand, you know, and, and for what kind of functionalities will be there. Regarding the control, um, there will be a bunch of other exciting new device categories, uh, especially in the VR space. Uh, what you see here is, is uh, the Vertex Omni, it's a kind of threadmill thing, so you have some sensors on your shoes and you can walk in this safe environment because when you have a VR headset, uh, you, you, you will fall off a certain uh, podest like this and so you are in the same space, you can walk around and your movements will be transferred in the game, you know, or in, 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 into any other applications. And there are some other cool devices out there, one is called Birdly, which is uh, a device which uh, makes you feel like a bird, so you can really get onto this device and start to, to move like a bird, would be a cool combination to combine this with a 360 degree video flight from the air. A partner of us is doing aerial 360 degree filming and it, we haven't tried it out yet but I can imagine it would be nice to, to really feel like a bird in control of the VR scenario. So, but we will see a bunch of other super cool devices and actually there are predictions that the market from a business perspective regarding the, the, the input devices in VR <coughs> is nearly as high as the, de de the device market itself. So we will see. Okay, so this was the the controller and the interaction part. Now let's go into the, the visualization part. So uh, what, what capabilities do we have to make the, the, the visible part more exciting? Um, most of you have probably already played around with some kind of AR browser like Junaio from Atayo. So you just put your phone uh, somewhere, it gets the real world picture and displays some additional information overlays. Where do I find a, I don't know, hotel uh, parking, uh, a lot or something. Um, it's more exciting to have not just the, the flat 2D overlays, it's of course cool to have 3D objects. There's a very nice application from IKEA, so you can go into your living room and put virtual furniture in your room. And it, the quality is so great, and based on this Metaio engine, uh, even the lighting is being adopted. So, so the application is realizing where the light comes and is adopting the shading and, and stuff from the virtual object. Uh, so that it really becomes a total realistic experience. So this is pretty cool. Uh, and we hope that it will be even cooler with the Microsoft HoloLens to have really holographic uh, projections. But we will see. Okay, so that was the, the visualization part, the augmentation part. And now uh, the, the final thing, of course, is to fully virtualize an experience. Um, and um, I come to this object and the R world stuff later. You can even um, start to uh, scan real people and virtualize them. And what I brought uh, with me is an example of, of this boxer I, I mentioned before. So we're doing now um, this boxing game and we have a partner who has a, a full body motion capturing studio. So they built uh, an environment with more than 64 DSLR cameras. And so you get into this environment and with just a few clicks you're getting 64 high resolution pictures and with classic photogrammetry uh, technologies, you can then build a 3D model. And so the magic is, 
when you of course have the perfect lighting conditions, you get really uh, a, a very good model. Um, but it's very time consuming. So uh, they had 10 different uh, big Apple based uh, uh, racks, uh, which uh, required them alone half an hour to get this first uh, preview of the thing. You know? What we did then is we did motion capturing. So we put some special motion markers onto the body of, by, by the way, this is Stardan Murina, it's the uh, 12 times uh, kickbox world championship. <laughs> so, uh, uh, never beat it so far. And then with the motion capturing, we have been able to, to capture the typical movements of the boxer. And now we have, of course, the 3D model, we have the interaction from the lead motion, the boxing, and we have even a 360 degree video of a real boxing fight. And so we are moving the, the real 360 degree video the, the virtual boxer and the, uh, the movements from you as a, a, a boxer and so this this is the kind of thing you can do uh, with, uh, oh sorry about that, I forgot to mention that it's not just about of course uh, using 3D models of, of real people, uh, of course you can um, build fully virtual world. So we are here in reality, we can scan ourselves we can build 3D objects of things which come later. So uh, let's say you're selling luxury boats, which cost uh, around about a meter, uh, a million per meter. So when you're selling a boat for a hundred, hundred million, you may want to give your customer um, the ability to walk through this object, or even when you build some, some uh, real estate object or something. So that's very exciting, of course, to uh, do a pre-visualization of objects will, which will be come reality later, but of course you can build full, uh, re uh, uh, let's say, environments which are virtual. So for games you can do things uh, which will never come reality. And so that's the excitement about the, the whole um, virtualization, uh, which gives you the ability to let people explore uh, some, some totally new worlds. And so please close your eyes because I need to click through all this again. <laughs> Okay, so now we've seen um, the whole arsenal of devices and technologies. Most of them are there yet, and you can start uh, build applications already with them. But you see already it's kind of uh, complex because it requires a lot of different technologies. So it's AR, it's VR, uh, it are different types of platforms. So uh, it's pretty um, uh, complicated, you know. But there's also some technology out there like the Interreal Sense, which make things a bit easier. You know, what you see here is basically um, some uh, variations of the, the RealSense technology. So RealSense is basically a technology which comes in form of a camera, which is not just be able to uh, give you the RGB information, but also some sensor information. There are ER laser uh, components in it, and so you're not just getting picture information, but also a point cloud of things, you know, where you can do some computational work on it. So there are already some developer versions out there, um, and there are also some products you can buy already on the market where the, the cameras are built in. And since Intel is behind it, you can expect that these technologies will be very broadly available. So you should have a look at it because I expect that in a couple of years, most of your computing devices will have these cameras. So what, they, what can you do with them? So they can actually, uh, you, you can do hand recognition, you know, it's tracking of your fingers, gestures, it has face recognition, it has speech recognition and also generation and you can also interact with your environment and that's very exciting uh, because this enables new uh, application scenarios which have been pretty complicated before. So for instance you can do depth enhanced photo and video, so maybe you've heard about light field photography which is pretty important for virtual reality, so you're trying to get uh, the full light field of an environment which allows you to do some computational stuff afterwards and even with real sense you can do things like that you take a picture but since you have all this this other information from the sensors you can decide after you've taken the picture where you want to focus etc so this is kind of a light field photography concept of course uh, it's about speech recognition and it's about speech generation very exciting but you can also do 3d scanning you know and just to give you an uh, applications uh, example we have a, a company who wants to uh, do virtual product catalogs with 3D objects. And they don't have the original 3D data. And so it's about recreating the 3D objects. 
and we tried it with classic phot photog uh, phot photogrammetry, which is quite uh, uh, expensive because when you do photos and doesn't don't have the perfect lighting conditions, it's very uh, a lot of work to do. You need to take around about 50 pictures per object, and every of the single pictures need to have the perfect lighting condition, no shadows, and it's nearly impossible to create it uh, uh, as long as you don't have this this 100,000 euro uh, uh, lab environment we have seen before, you know. And so uh, we're trying at the moment to 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 do this scanning with uh, uh, real sense technology. <laughs> and uh, we are very positive so that we get uh, good results with it. So you can also do the measurement, of course. You can uh, go into a room and, and get the environment data. You can uh, perfectly create some mixed and augmented reality applications. You, you put your tablet uh, in your living room, and then there's a virtual racing uh, course popping up and the children can start to, to do some racing and it doesn't uh, damage your <laughs> living room that much like a real thing. You know? So that, that's pretty cool, but of course uh, also face, face detection is very exciting. So actually at our 360 degree media conference yesterday I showed some examples where you can do uh, the, the markerless face recognition for 3D avatars, you know. Let's say you want to create a movie and have a, a 3D avatar. Just sit, sit someone in front of the real sense camera and let them start talking, make facial expressions. They get in real time immediately in the, into the 3D model. This was pretty hard to achieve in the past, so that that's quite an exciting functionality. And of course, uh, we have also gesture recognition, you know. And uh, I want to give you a little introduction into that. Um, because again, I think uh, even when there are some obstacles we have to overcome, uh, gesture recognition will become also a very popular uh, immersive technology uh, application. Uh, what you get from the camera is simply a 3D uh, model of, of, of a hand. You, you, you get the whole special data, you see where the hand is basically located into the room, you get a block with all the data, you get already masks and contours and uh, some other information and based on that information you can then start uh, really to, to, to do some exciting computational things about it. So that's basically uh, the, the, the skeleton tracking function which shows what kind of uh, um, points of your hand will be captured by the camera and based on this uh, capturing there are some built-in gestures which are already automatically being detected by the software. You know, and uh, people try, of course, to come up with some gestures which are common. You know, where people know what, what this means in some countries or <laughs> in others not. Uh, the visa and others. Uh, so, but you see already the problem here. You know, <laughs> uh, and and um, the technology can do a lot. You know, the question is now how to how you are using the gestures to transfer it into interactions in your application, and there, this is where the complication starts because you can uh, uh, come up with some concepts, you know, uh, and it took 20 years for us to figure out the, what the mouse and the, the little <laughs> sign in, 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 the, in the window right corner does mean, but nowadays everybody will, uh, can use a, a keyboard, a mouse and a Windows based um, user interface and I think over time we need uh, also a common understanding what these gestures mean and maybe we will get a set of fully commonly understood features, then it's easier to really use that stuff in the different uh, application scenarios. So this is something where uh, Intel is proposing how to use the different gestures for certain interactions. Uh, and actually I'm uh, excited to, to, to see uh, how this thing will uh, uh, come into to life. Actually we are doing a, a workshop now at the LMU Munich where some students are trying to build gesture-based user interfaces for games or for product configuration scenarios. Um, and actually, on, on Monday they start with the implementation. I'm handing out a few Intel RealSense cameras and I'm excited to see what users are really giving for feedback because when you think as a developer or even a user and uh, experience specialist how this could work in practice, this doesn't mean that the user really understands what you have thought about it. So, uh, with that, I'm basically at the end of my talk. I hope you got a 
a nice inspiration about technologies which are available today, which are maybe come the next couple of years. I personally think that immersive computing is the next big thing, so it will take the next five to ten years. And as everybody is now online, uh, is connected, has some mobile devices, in the next five to ten years everybody will have some augmented or virtual reality devices, some natural user interface uh, technologies. And it's up to you now, not just to uh, think about the concepts, but to, to really make some applications for that. You know? And regarding Intel, they have a, a great developer program. I can uh, I recommend you to sign up to get hands on uh, into this technologies and simply have fun. So and now have uh, also fun with the cardboards you're getting. So thank you very much. <laughs> Questions? Um, okay. How does this Intel Realm sense compare to the Microsoft's uh, Kinect? Because okay. the so the they are more or less in the same category, but I'm not sure. If yeah. So actually, um, the question was how does uh, the Intel RealSense compare with uh, Microsoft Kinect? Actually, uh, conceptually they are close, but from a tech perspective, so there are some differences. It's mostly the range. So when you think about uh, even leap motion, is also another uh, um, uh, device in that category. This is super optimized for hand recognition. So it just works in a very uh, short distance and, and can do hand recognition. RealSense has basically two camera specific. So the one is uh, a camera which is front facing. So let's say you, you have it in your laptop uh, for applications like um, a face recognition for login or something, you know, then it's optimized for a short <coughs> range. Uh, but when you do this measurement into the room, you have a you need to bridge basically a larger distance. So Kinect is more about uh, four to seven meters and full body detection, you know. And so I would say um, you have um, the Kinect in, the, in the, the broader five to seven meter range real sense something in between and then you have the, the really short distance leap motion. But the, the thing is, you, we need to try it out, you know. We have seen a lot of different things. Some things work perfect, others not. So it's up to you to find find the, the, the real question <laughs> answering. Okay? Did you also try the depth sensor from Structure, I hope? Yes, we, uh, we, we tried it. Uh, but a while ago, not for this specific scenario we're doing right now. But I think they're probably kind of similar, you know. Uh, but but th this is already on the market since one and a half years, around about. Yeah. So it's it's, it's an add-on device for uh, the i uh, for the iPad, you know. But it's by the way, there's also another technology from Google called Project Tango. Uh, and uh, by the way, the real sense software is also compatible with the Tango devices. You know, I've seen recently a prototype of that. Because it's sim similar, they have the, the RGB camera, but also some, some additional sensors, which where you can do similar things, you know. Okay, another question? Hi, thank you for your talk. Um, I'm curious, you, you, mentioned that, you mentioned at the beginning that, you know, that, that children these days are, you know, really seeing touch is more ubiquitous, and, and it's becoming, it's, it's really spreading around, and I'm curious, do you think that, given that you're in this field, that, um, that that this immersive computing will ever match the precision of what we currently have? Or I guess what I'm trying to ask is, do you think we'll ever be coding with gestures and, and voices? And that kind of thing? <laughs> That's a very good question, you know? Uh, uh, you have all have seen some nice movies with this uh, kind of uh, future-based things. Actually, uh, it, it's hard to say, you know, um, and it always has to do with uh, the quality of things, you know. For instance, speech was very bad in the beginning, you know, uh, I, I, and I tried it out for a while, um, uh, but I never used it finally because it, it, it was not good enough. But, but when I started to do the, the whole smartwatch stuff, you know, uh, I realized um, it, it's convenient that it now works. You can talk to your smartwatch to do a search or even answer uh, or re re repeat an email, you know. And since the technology has become so great, I'm starting to use it more and more. And I think with the immersive stuff, you know, I remember the days because I worked also 10 years for Microsoft, you know, I got the first Kinect beta version very early and I thought, well, that's kind of cool, but I felt always that's not really, you know, when you do a touch, and this is something Apple did great when you got the first iPad, 
you put your finger on the screen and it worked, you know. I did touch screen applications in 1988, you know, with this ugly, you know, you did five touches and then the calibration was dead and you did, you know, and now everybody is using touch because it's perfect, you know. And I think the same thing will happen with uh, the, the whole g stuff, you know, when it's get really more precise, when you have the, the, the feeling that you're really interacting by doing something then you maybe start really using it pretty naturally. But it, this will probably take a while, you know? That's my kind of thought on that. Thanks. Um, I'd like to uh, hijack a little bit this uh, talk. If somebody's interested in working in the AR, VR area, uh, my company, our company is hiring, so just come and talk to me in the lunch break. <laughs> okay, I'm fine with that because I'm anyway in Munich. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, okay, great. All right, so then have fun. Uh, and again, uh, everybody should get his cardboard on the way out. Thank you.